On today's episode, I want to show you the new backdrop creator. Right now it's found in Photoshop beta and hopefully it will be coming to Photoshop 2023 soon. It's pretty exciting. Let's take a look at it. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm working in Photoshop beta because I want to show you the new backdrop creator. It's pretty exciting and hopefully it will be coming to Photoshop 2023 soon. But anybody can download this version of beta and I'll show you how to do it. To download the beta version, just come up to your Creative Cloud icon and click on it. Now you could run Photoshop beta alongside regular Photoshop 2023 with no problem. But what you want to do is on the left hand side here, just come down, see where it says beta apps, click on that. And then right here, mine says open because I've already installed it, but you could go ahead and install Photoshop beta right there. That's all you have to do. And then just open it up. I have two examples today. I have this image of the girl and then I have this of the mountain. I'll be replacing the sky in this one using the backdrop creator, not the traditional way of replacing a sky in Photoshop with sky replacement. We'll be using the backdrop creator. And on the grill, I'll replace the backdrop as well. I'll show you how we can make our own textures and different backgrounds. It's pretty exciting. So let's check it out. Before I send this into the backdrop creator, I want to select out our subject. So to do that, we can come up here to select in Photoshop and click on subject and that selects out our subject. And it might not be a bad idea to refine this selection just to check it out and make sure it's okay. So let's come back up to select and click on select and mask. And now we can do some refining. Now there's hair in this image. So let's click on refine hair. That'll give us a better selection of the hair. Now there's some areas here we need to take care of. I'm using this brush right here. And this is the refine edge brush and I'm just going to just brush along here and then on the flower down here I'm going to brush over this whole area in here just so we can get a really nice selection. I'm not worried too much about it because I just want you to see how this works here. And the hair looks pretty good so I'm going to let that alone. I'm going to output this to a selection by clicking OK. Now right now I have the girl selected but I actually want the background selected so let's come up to select and we could come right here and click inverse or you could use the shortcut shift command i or shift control i i believe it is for windows click inverse and that inverts the selection that's what we need now i want you to notice that i'm working on a background layer you see that lock right there if i come up here to filter we're going to launch a neural filter that's where the backdrop filter is inside neural filters and it's grayed out. So what you need to do is just click on that lock and that'll unlock it. And now when you come up here to filter and click on neural filters, now we can launch our neural filters. Now you can see the girl is removed, but that's not a problem. Hang in there. I'll show you how this all works out. What we're going to do is click on backdrop creator. We have to toggle it on. Now by default, it is not downloaded. So it'll have a little download error here and you're going to have to download it. So do that first. Mine's already downloaded. So I'm going to toggle this on and now you're going to notice here it says gold and black paint swirling and here it says popular prompts. I'll show you how this works. This is really cool. If you've ever played around with mid journey or stable diffusion, this is the same technology. It's AI technology where it's going to go out and generate a backdrop for you using prompts. You tell it what you want it to create for you. Basically what you'll do is you'll type in a prompt. Now this prompt is here by default, golden black paint swirling. If I click create right now, it would create that. And you see this variety slider, you can adjust this and it'll give you different variations of that. And generally what it does is gives you three images to pick from, and then you could keep generating. Now it says up here, prompts will be processed in the cloud and usage limits may apply. I don't know what the usage limits are. I've been using this for a while and I haven't had any issues, but it could stop me at some point. I don't know how that's going to work. Remember, this is all in beta right now. Photoshop gives us some help. See right here where it says popular prompts. You could click on this and you're going to see popular prompts. And let's say we like one in here. Like maybe I want to add a texture to this image as well as a different type of a background. So let me use this prompt to generate a texture. I'm just going to click create. 
it's going to generate three prompts. Let me X out of here. And here are our three images. Now, this is these images are based on this prompt. Brushed steel or aluminum metal background photographed scratches. So let's click on the first one. And it applies it to the image. And that's a pretty cool texture. Let's try this one. And that's kind of nice too. I like the diagonal lines. And let's try this one. I don't like this one as much. So I think I like this one. I think I'm going to go with this one. And I want you to notice down here. See right here for the output. New layer group. This is your only option. If you click the drop down, you only have the new layer group. So right now, if I click OK, all three of these images would go into a group. But I only want this one. So to get rid of this one, I click X to get rid of it. If I wanted to generate more of these type of textures with different variations, I could click here and it would generate three more that are similar to this. But I'm happy with what I got. I'm going to go ahead and X out of this one too because I only want this one. Now, don't worry here that you don't see the actual image of the woman standing here. I'll show you how that's going to work once we get back into Photoshop. But the other thing I want to do is generate a background. And how about some kind of a uh, bokeh background? So let me go ahead and select all this and I'll type over it. I'm going to type in um, bokeh photograph pastel color and click create and it generates three images and out of the three i think this is my favorite so i'm going to generate three more by clicking right here and you see it's made variations off of this one but i think i do like this one the best so let me click on it and it'll fill in over here yeah and i like that i think that looks really nice so these two are selected i'm going to click ok it'll send those into a layer group and you can see right here now, we don't see our model, but we can see we have a selection. All I need to do is come down to the bottom right-hand side of Photoshop, click on this mask icon. This will add a new layer mask, and now we can see our model. Now, this layer mask is only letting the background show through the white area. The model is protected. So here's the before, and here's the after. Now, here's a cool thing. We could use adjustment layers to alter this background. In other words, give it more saturation or lighten it up. And all we have to do is come down here. Say I wanted to lighten the background up. Come down here to adjustment layers. Let's grab a levels adjustment. And let me just lighten up the midtones a bit. Maybe something like that. Just lighten it up. But this mask is protecting the model. No matter what adjustment layer we apply, the model will be protected. But now let's work with this texture. Right now, this texture layer is turned off. If I turn it on, you don't see any effect. What I would need to do is drag it up above this levels adjustment layer. I don't want to take it outside of this group because I want this layer mask to protect the model. But I could do things right now like this. Take the opacity and drag it back so I can reveal the underlying background. I don't like that so much. I'm going to drag it the whole way up to 100%. And let's try some blend modes. Let's see if we can find a blend mode that'll work. So I'm going to click on the drop down. Multiply is usually a good one. That's a little too dark. Screen's another good one. I don't like that one. Overlay is really good. I do like overlay. Soft light is a little more gentle one. I think I like that one. So I'm going to go with soft light. So let's click on soft light. Now here's before the texture and here's after, and that's really nice. And if that texture's too strong, you can take this opacity and start to pull it back a little bit. But I think I like it up the whole way. I think it really works well for this image. So this image started out looking like this, and now it looks like this. But we can even make it better, and I'll show you how. I'll start by collapsing this group. Just click on this little triangle right here, collapse that group, and I wanna pull this entire image together. And that's Shift, Option Command E. That pulls the entire image together. And that was the shortcut for a Mac, and here's the shortcut for a PC. The reason I pulled the image together onto one stamp layer, one stamp pixel layer, is because I want to marry the subject to the background. And to do that, I needed this pixel layer because I want to come up to Filter, go into the Blur group, and click on Average. And that averages all the colors together. And now at this point, I could take the opacity and drag it the whole way off and just add a little bit of that average over top of there. And that kind of blends the image all together and it makes it more believable. But a better way of doing it, I think, is to take the opacity and drag it the whole way up to 100% and then change the blend mode to something, say, like soft light or overlay. 
In this case, soft light. Soft light generally is going to be the best. And what I like to do next is take the opacity, take it the whole way off, and then just start to build it up slowly. And I think this looks good, right at 53%. Here's the before and here's the after. And what that does is ties the foreground and background all together. So that same average color is over the entire image, making it more believable. Next, I'm going to see if I can create a sky for this mountain image. We're going to generate our own sky with AI, and we're going to replace it. We're not going to use the sky replacement filter in Photoshop. We're going to use Backdrop Creator, and I'll show you how we do it. The first thing we need to do is come up to Select, and let's select the sky. Click on Sky. Photoshop will select the sky. Now remember, we can't go into a neural filter right now because we have the sky selected, and everything is grayed out in here. All we need to do is unlock this background layer. So just click on the lock that unlocks it. And we can see we have a selection by the marching ants. So let's come up here to filter, click on neural filters, and we could get started here. Let's make a sky. Come to the creative section and we'll just toggle on backdrop creator. And let's come up with a good prompt. Now again, you could click on popular prompts and you'll see here's a sky background prompt here. So this will help us. They're using sky background, HD, photograph, fluffy clouds at sunset, stunning. We could click on that and just use that. Let's go ahead and do that first. Let's click that and let's generate that. Let me X out of here. And you can see we have some clouds, but let's see if we can come up with our own prompt. How about sky, HD, fluffy clouds, sunset? Let's try that. Sky, HD, fluffy clouds, sunset. Let's see if we can get away with that. I'm just going to click create. And here we go. Here's three more from just that prompt. So you can see all these prompts are going to give you a little different results. And remember, if you get one that you like, like say we kind of like this one, if we click here, we can get more like it. So it'll generate three more of that particular style. And that's pretty cool. Now let's try it. Let's just pick one here. I'm going to pick this one here. Or do I want this one? You know what? I might try this one. Now, remember, once we get back in Photoshop, we can transform this and change it. But let's go ahead and take this one. And let's take this one as well, just in case we want both of those. Maybe the one's not going to work out, so let's try these two, and I'll click OK. Now, we can see we have a selection by the marching ants here. We're on the Neural Filter group. So remember, all we need to do is add a layer mask to this. So come down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on this layer mask icon, and there is our sky replaced. Now, we're not done here. What we need to do, this is the sky we're using right here. See if I shut this off. There's the before and here's the after. So let's click on this layer. Now, I have my transform tool, and you can type T to get your transform tool. Now, I can adjust this, okay? So, like, I can find what part of this image I want to use but and I think maybe right like here looks pretty good now I can make it larger or whatever I want to do but I like that I think it's a little bit too dark so I need to lighten it up so I could take a levels adjustment and let's come down here to the adjustment layers and grab a levels and all I want to do is take the midtone slider and drag it to the left and kind of lighten this up a little bit and I think maybe right about here looks pretty good. Let's compare it to the lightness of the original sky. This is the original lightness. See, it was pretty light. So let me go ahead and I think I need to lighten this up even more to maybe, I don't know, somewhere right around here. So compare it to that lightness and this lightness. Yeah, I think that's going to work out pretty good. And I do like the sky. Now we have the other sky. So let me go ahead and shut these off and let's turn the other sky on. Okay, so it's a little different look. Now let's click on the sky. Now I got my transform tool and I can pull this up. And let's see what area we want to use. Maybe like right about there. And again, it needs lightened up. But you know what? I don't like the sky as much. So I'm just going to shut that off. I'm going to go back to this sky. And now to make this look like it's all part of the same scene, I'm going to collapse this group and... Do a shift option command E to pull this all together. And then I'll come up to filter into the blur section and click on average. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to either overlay or soft light. I think it's going to be soft light. And then we could take this and start to pull it back. But that's going to bring those colors all together. 
and it's going to look more believable. Okay. So here's without the averaging and here it is with it. So I think that's good. And overall, I think I like it. So here is the before and here is the after. Now we've done that with the new backdrop creator. Well, there you go, everyone. That was the backdrop creator found in Photoshop beta. Don't forget, you can download it. You can use it alongside Photoshop 2023. You can use them both. Check it out. Eventually, it should come to 2023. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.